Hello, um, this video is a complete guide on how to juke the right way. So I've seen a million TikToks, videos, short videos, long videos, explanations, demonstrations on how to juke flares and gorilla tag. And not all of them work. Some work, some moves work, some ideas work, and some don't. So this video is just gonna be filtering out the good from the bad, and I'm going to be giving you, the viewer, what I do to juke other monkeys. So there will be kind of two parts to this video. The first part is kind of the philosophy. It sounds scary. You need to watch it in order to understand what I'm talking about in part two. Um, but anyway, part one will be the ideas. So what you're trying to accomplish. You're not just trying to do that and then hopefully you won't get tagged there's ideas behind everything and part one the philosophy will be understanding and talking through those ideas um that will probably be me talking and then clips or of me juking or um just video of me playing gorilla tag playing in the background and maybe it won't we'll see and then part two two fingers um, will be the actual moves. So what moves you should do, where to do it, what works, what definitely doesn't work, what I've seen a lot of people do, what I've seen no one do, and everything in between. So that'll be it. It's I think it's going to be a decently long video, but we'll see. Um, let me know if I missed anything, and yeah, let's get started. All right, so this is part one, the philosophy. So it sounds scary, philosophy, it's a big, big, scary word. Um, it's not It's not scary. The point of the philosophy is to understand what the moves that you will make or see later on in this video accomplish. So a lot of people think that it's only just trying to do something fancy and have a lava monkey go flying by and you get to make fun of them um, or you get to laugh, have a good time. I have done that before and you have too when you get a really satisfying juke you see the lava monkey go flying and I have no idea where you are and it's hilarious so in order to have that happen more consistently um, you need to change it up so a lot of basic jukes that I see on TikTok and YouTube involve of going one way and then jumping back that way so if I'm running this is what it looks like I'm running boom that's that's it that's all it is. It doesn't work. I mean, for me, it doesn't work. I've seen so many people do it. It's all over TikTok, YouTube Shorts, YouTube, everything. It's on absolutely everything. So when I see someone running in a straight line across a bridge or something, and I see them kind of stick that arm back and not bring it forward, and I can see the motion of them looking down and starting to plan their launch down, first thing I do, I hop back a little bit, I just jump, and I can tag them really easily. No point in trying that because it's the same thing every time. If you change it up, you'll get better results. So the main rule, so this is like the golden rule of juking and gorilla tag. You never, well, there's kind of two parts to it. So part one, one, you never do the same thing repeatedly. So let's say I have a juke. And it's like, go forward and then hit around a tree or something. If I do this once and I get someone, I'm, I'm going to want to do it again. Or you might want to do it again to get the person again or to get a different lava monkey. And then you do it again, and it works. And then you do it again, and it works. And then you do it again, and you're tagged. And you're like, oh, well, that must have been lucky. He must have jumped out of the tree. And then you do it again, and you get tagged. And, oh, well, I didn't see him coming. And then eh, do it again and tag. And you're like, oh, well, I, it doesn't it doesn't work anymore. That video lied to me. No. It is you doing it too many times in a row. So what you got to do is change it up. So jukes can be similar. They don't have to be earth shattering. They can be similar to each other. You just can't do the same, same thing. So let's say all your juke is is just going around a tree and then jumping to the left. That's it. Let's just say in a perfect world that that works as an example. So instead of every single time going around the tree and jumping left, first time you do it, go ahead, do it. Jump around the tree, go to the left. The next time, you might be able to get away with going around the tree and then jumping to the left, or you could go around the tree and jump to the right, and it's different. And then the lava monkey or whoever's chasing you doesn't know what to expect. 
So if you change it up, there's less of a chance of you being caught, of less of a chance of people recognizing a pattern, um, and you'll have an easier time with, um, with getting away with it overall. And part two of the golden rule is keep something in between you and your lava monkey and the person chasing you, whatever. So it can't be something like this little thing here for trying on cosmetics. Because if I'm here and there's a lava monkey right here, you can just jump at, it, jump at me. And that doesn't work. So it needs to be something big. So like this mirror is a good example. Because if I am here and there's a lava monkey on the other side, back here, trying to chase me, they don't know where I am. I mean, if I had a friend standing anywhere on this little square here, and I was standing back here, I would never be able to accurately guess where they were. Maybe you could hear them, but with people yelling and the footsteps, there's no way you could hear someone reliably. So, if you keep something in between you and the lava monkey, you'll have an easier time. In my How to Play Ground video, I cover this a lot. I figured I, it deserved its own video because of how important it is. So always keep something in between you and a lava monkey. Now that can be anything large enough to where the lava monkey cannot just go essentially in a straight line to you. Anything that interrupts a straight line in between you and a lava monkey. So here's a good example. Um, this right here. The sound pole, or whatever you want to call it. The pole with sound, the loudspeaker pole, music thingy, whatever. If I am here, right here, and there's a lava monkey right here, they can no longer go in a straight line at me. It just doesn't work. And you can't jump over this. Yeah, you can climb over it and then jump at me, but by the time you start climbing, I'm gone. So, that means if the lava monkey's trying to tag me, they have to make a choice. They can't go straight. If, if a lava monkey can go straight, I guarantee, unless you're playing some crazy comp player, that they will just take a straight path to you. So there's a lava monkey, like, over by that post, They're gonna and they want to tag me, they're going to run in a straight line. They're not going to run around and make it fancy. If I'm right there, they're not going to run a circle around me and then tag me. They're going to run in a straight line straight to me. So if you interrupt that straight line with a solid object, already you have a slight advantage. So solid object. How do you use it? Well, it limits the choices of a lava monkey. So I use this sometimes. One of the better ones that I like uh, to put in between me and someone else, that light pole in particular, I'll get to it. It's like this pole. So if there's a lava monkey on the other side and I'm right here, they have to make a choice, realistic choices. Go around it to the left or go around it to the right only real options there. If a lava monkey wants to go over, just take off. It takes them forever. They're the two fastest ways. So, if there's someone on the top of that hill, and I'm sitting here, I want to go tag him. No straight line. I have to pick a way to get there. It's either left or right. So, if I go to the left, and that monkey goes to the right, there's still something in between us. So I'm not saying go run in circles around something and hope someone runs circles around it too, but it buys you time. So if I'm running around to the left, and then I just jump, and you're already working your way around the left side, and I just jump at you, and all of a sudden, you can go the second I make a mistake. A lot of people have a tendency when they know they can catch someone, they just kind of jump, and they like stick both hands out and try to tag them. They don't try to run through the person they're tagging. So if I'm trying to tag that pole, most people, I'm saying most because some people are better than others, but most average to pretty good people, when they know they're going to tag someone, or they think they're going to tag someone, they will do this. <laughs> or some variation, they will run up to the monkey, and then they'll hit him. Or they'll go really low, and they'll just stick their arm out, and they're not going to keep running. And you can use that to your advantage. If they n think, or they know, whatever in their mind... They know they can tag you and you're standing on that point right there. I guarantee you will get people doing this. You will not get anyone smart enough to run up and just try to tag you with the intent of either continuing to run forward or prepared to run to either side. So when you inevitably catch someone throwing themselves away or going off balance or expecting to have tagged you, just go the other way. It's that easy. So part one 
of the golden rule, part A, part one, first half, whatever. That is, is kind of part A and part B of the golden rule. Part A, repetition, don't do things a bunch of times in a row, change it up. And part two, keep something in between you and the lava monkey. So that's kind of it for the um, philosophy bit. Oh, uh, just quick 30 second recap. One, repetition, or part one, repetition. So never do the same thing a bunch of times in a row. You can do it once. You may probably get it twice. You can pr maybe do it three times in a row. You're not getting it more than five times in a row ever. So let's say you're going around the left every single time. Just go to the right once or twice. Change it up. Make it random. And then part two of the golden rule is uh, keep something in between you and the person chasing you. Light pole, tree, even this green thing here. Anything that obstructs view, which is great. Like, this is great. If I'm standing here and there's a lava monkey on the side, they can't see me, so they don't know where I am. So that's good. Or anything, and, or, anything, that prevents lava monkeys from getting a straight line to run at you. So if I'm on that point right there, I, and I'm, right, I'm on a lava monkey running at that, I can't go in a straight line. It forces me to make a choice between left or right or something else. And capitalize on that. So now it's moving right, into So now we're on to part two of the video. So we have the intro and then part one covering the philosophy. So what everything means and what the point is. And this is now part two movements and explanation of the movements. So I'm sure every single person, every single person watching this video has seen a TikTok or YouTube shorts juke that goes something like running forward and hitting the ground. That sucks in every way possible. It just completely sucks. I mean, it's really easy to predict. If you do it more than once, people will catch on, and every single grill tag player, no matter if they got the game yesterday or a year ago or two years ago or when it came out or before it came out, whatever, everyone knows what that juke is. So don't use it because everyone knows what it is. Do new stuff. So something new would necessarily be like a spinoff on the same thing. So instead of jumping up, you jump like to the side. Yeah, that's new, but people have done that and people have tried that. So you need to come up with stuff completely new, which is what I will be going over in this part, the movements. So my jukes aren't necessarily, um, they're not... Not all of them are universal, and some of them are universal. By universal, I mean you can do them in more than one spot, or in any spot. So the first one I'm going to do, my absolute favorite, this is what I'll do to friends, what I'll do to people who I'm having a good time with, what I'm doing if I'm being chased, and they're really persistent and I want to get away. It's my go-to if I'm ever up by bridge. And never this. Never do that. Ever. So... My juke consists of using this tree, the size of platforms, and the fact that lava monkeys can only be coming at you from two directions. This way, and scaling up the side of the tree this way. Of course, oh, but that, but what if they what if they scale the tree and they come up this way? Well, that, that hardly ever happens, and if it does, run. Or what if they come from this tree? If you see a lava monkey running at you, Run! If you're doing the juke, the lava monkeys will be coming from this way, and this way kind of only. The reason I included coming up right here is because it is very popular for lava monkeys to do something like this if they hear you up there, just to try to catch you off guard. So every once in a while, just check down here. If you hear a voice, check. If you see a lava monkey, just run. That easy. But if the lava monkey is coming from here, so basically, if they make it to this tree right here and they have any intention of crossing to get to you, this will work. And it will work every time if you do it right. So you got to remember the two golden rules. First, part one of the golden rule, repetition. Never do the same thing a bunch of times. This kind of fuzzes the line for the first part because you can do this 50 times, 10 times probably. 50 was an exaggeration. You can probably do this 10 times in a row and get someone every single time. Maybe not the same person, but a bunch of different people, yeah. So, it doesn't mean do the same movements every time and you'll get away with it. 
I mean, you can use the same idea, and it might work up to five if you're lucky ten times. But this is like a once every couple rounds type thing. This isn't something I just sit here and wait for. Because I want to have fun. I want to go do other things. So it consists of Lava Monkey seeing you anywhere on this platform. doesn't matter. I personally like to stand kind of in this back corner closer to the edge. So not like hanging off the edge, but like somewhere over here. Just so I can see what's going on at Double Walls. Watch for Lava Monkeys coming this way. See up there. See if there's anyone coming from here. If they're coming from Stump and they go along that branch, they will see you right here, which is what you want, because you want to attract people. So when they're coming, and they, the second they make it to here, and they start advancing, that's when you can begin. So, already covered part one of the golden rule. Now this is part two of the golden rule. Keep something in between you and the lava monkey that either or, or either and, that both interrupts line of sight. So, there's a lava monkey right there. They can't really see me. Maybe they can see my elbows, but probably can't see me. And then obstructs the ability of, to run at you in a straight line. If I'm, if I'm behind that tree, there's no straight line because you're running into a tree. And then that makes me look like an idiot. So, covering both part A and part B of the golden rule, here is kind of the movement. So when there's a lava monkey coming at you, first thing you do, enact that second bit. Get behind something. They no longer know exactly where you are. They can get an estimate. If they're not really thinking too hard, they'll probably assume you're just sitting right there waiting. Someone who's a little better might think, oh, they, they scaled or they took off the backside or they moved up a couple of branches and when I run around, they're going to take off. So you're kind of appealing to the imagination. So when you kind of go back here, you're not just like, ooh, don't, I hope they don't see me. You're moving back and forth a little bit. So you're still obstructing that line of sight and you're keeping something in the way. And by obstructing line of sight in this particular scenario, it's not hiding. It's keeping something in between you and the lava monkey. So if I'm right here, and the lava monkey's running at me in this direction, bada bing bada boom, this branch, edge of this tree. Now they're going to run at me like this. So I'm jump back. And, they're over and then I jump back. And it's not something that you're just doing this constantly. It's you see a lava monkey coming, you shift over, you shift back, you shift over. Once they kind of pick a side, so often the kind of bad ones will just come here, sit, watch for a second, and then pick a side. The good monkeys will know immediately what you're trying to do. Oh, they're trying to trick me? I'll just pick a side and go for it. So they'll pick a side to try to tag you. So you got to keep your eyes open. you got to see for when they pick a side. So a good tell is often when they're coming up to it, they're going to stare at where they're going to go. So if I'm going to the right, I am. Or most people would look directly to the right and aim their body towards it. Hardly ever will you get someone whose body is pointing this way, whose eyes are pointing this way, do this to tag you. just doesn't, it's not how the body works. So you're looking for body language, where the body is facing, where the head is facing, what directions the arms are moving in. That's a huge tell when it comes to this game. You can always tell where someone's going based on arm direction if they're running, ah! if they're running like this. So use that to your advantage and predict the side they're going to. Now, once you figure out what side they're going to, so let's say I'm go uh, the lava monkey is going to come in this way. I'm still popping back and forth until I know when they're making their decision. Not always going all the way. You can like throw in a couple halves, get in the get in the way, make them think you're going over there, and you're not. You can do the same thing over here. Just make it funny. You can pop out a little bit if they're hesitant, and then once they pick a side, let's say they pick this side. That's it. That's it. You just go. If they pick a side, they're going to dive around the corner, try to take and you just go. That's it. They try to dive around this corner. You can do some fancier stuff. I often try to do something like this to get over them, and maybe there's a second one coming. Or I'll use this opportunity to scale up here and hit myself over here and do whatever. Go that way, go that way, go that way. Infinite possibilities. And when I see them going that way, often, if I want a little extra spice... We'll jump up here because when they're running right here, I'm moving this way. They can't see me. They just know where I was and where they want to go. So obstructing their view. So if I get behind it and I jump up, they're going to think I'm in the last place they saw. If they think they saw me running in this direction, 
they're going to expect me to run in that direction, and that's where they're going to go. So if I put the tree in between them, and they can't see me, up and gone. That easy. Well, not quite that easy. That is the basis. If I have clips, I will have either included them already, or will include them at the end, or spend a couple hours trying to get someone to fall for it, which is actually really easy. It's not something that's quite as easy as, like, this. But it works almost 100% of the time. You just have to be careful of a line of lava monkeys coming to tag you. If there's one, you can do it. If there's two and they're super, super close together, assuming they both don't go to different sides, you can do it. If it does, does look like they're both going to different sides, just jump up. It's limitless. You can... The second they're obstructed and they're picking a side, you can go anywhere. doesn't matter. It's beautiful. And if there's two and they're kind of separated, so like one is all the way over here, and one is all the way over here, you can still do it. I just wouldn't recommend doing something like, oh, they're coming this way. I'm going to run straight into the other lava monkey. At the very least, do something like jumping up to this branch to try to jump over the lava monkey, which works a lot. So that's kind of it for this one. That's my, um, <laughs> this is my replacement of the running bridge juke. That's, <laughs> that's my version. So this, that wasn't, that can't be used everywhere. That can be used there and kind of there only. You can use the same principles, so keep something in between you and the lava monkey, and then once you see him pick a side, you can just go wherever you want. Ah! <laughs> and take care of it from there. That works. You take some of the principles, but this, this what I'm going to do now does work absolutely everywhere, and it uses the same principles. And again, I covered it in my How to Play Ground video, but not in enough detail for my liking. So, my How to Play Ground, I covered Gazebo, the tree that was there, it's no longer there, slide, branches of these trees, that tree a little bit, which I'm going to make a separate video for, and this beautiful thing right here. This beautiful piece of metal that just one day appeared, no one really knows when. Everyone thought it would leave once the rain went away, but it, it just never did. And we all love it. And most people really don't love it. So, here's my second one. This works anywhere. I do it on a light pole a lot because it's small, and I like to see where the person chasing me is. If you don't care, and you just want to assume where they're going, so if you see someone darting to the right, you can assume that and jump away to the left. That works. I like to see who I'm be running from so I can see where their eyes are looking. Because if this was this tree and I see him looking this way and I'm back here and I'm like, oh, okay, they're going to they're gonna go this way. I better go this way. And then you're like, you know what? I changed my mind. I want to go this way. I'm running right into them. But with this, I can see if they're looking over here and I'm like, oh, they're going to go. They're going to go this way. And then, oh, you know what? I changed my mind. I'm going to go over here. I can see that. I can see their body language shift and I can see their head shift, arm shift, everything. So, here's what it is. You want something in between you and your chaser, person tagging you. That is part two of the golden rule. Always. That's just always a thing. Same thing here. No exception. Lava monkey's coming up over this little ridge here, running at me. <laughs> Other side. Something physical. So they can't just jump straight at me. And more often than not, you will see someone, if, let's say I just stand still here and let someone run and tag me, nine times out of ten, or probably like four times out of ten, honestly, you're going to get something like this. Just going to try to make it a straight line. Because you can't go through it, but you can go really close to through it. And then you can put your hand through it and propel off of it. And then that other couple times, people will just run around it because it's not that thick. Or maybe they'll, um, like think you're going to juke them and you're they're just going to like dart around and then they're eventually going to go and tag you. That's going to be the other bunch, but most of the time you will get this. So, in order to protect against that, make a move. If they're coming at me, I can I can go over here, but oh whoa, there's nothing in between me and the lava monkey. They have a straight line, they win. You can't outrun the lava monkey forever. They're faster, and if you give them a straight line, they're going to take it and they're going to tag you. So, that doesn't work. Keep it here. And you know that they're going to do this, and they're going to do this fast. It's not a slow process. They can just run right at you. So, beat them to it. If you know they're going to try to do this, beat them to it. 
instead of letting them get to the pole and do that, get up on the pole. And they're like, oh, wait, what's he gonna, is he going to scale it? You know what? I'll beat him to it. I'm going to scale it first. Oh, wait, he didn't scale it. Or jumps up on the pole and he's like, oh, okay, he's going to he's gonna jump that way. I'm going to I'm gonna predict that. No, wait, he, he jumped the other way. Or the exact opposite. Or you know, if you got it right, oh, he did jump this way. He caught the branch. So you have a million opportunities the second you get here, and no one realizes you have a million opportunities until you are already up here. So from here... I, <laughs> sounds funny, sounds dumb, sounds like it would never work in a million years. It works every single time. This. That's it. Pushing myself behind another tree. That's it. So you get, you do this. They're trying to, recap, they're trying to do this to tag you. If you do this, they're going to come up, do the same thing, probably. Like, oh, where's he going to go? Where's he going to go? And then you go backwards. And they already have their hand here. They can't stick it around and pull fast enough to tag you so often you're gonna have them now oh, shoot push off to the side or I don't know, fall and then go or the really good ones they're just gonna adapt and find a way so they already have their hand on here no problem I'll keep going but another benefit to hitting backwards this another thicker tree that you can use to completely obstruct yourself from the vision of the lava monkey if there's a lava monkey sitting over there boom can't see me so from here, you can scale. You can scale a little bit and then jump this way. You can do this, whatever that is. And it works. That's a really fun thing I'm going to cover in the video for this tree. You can do this. That probably won't work, but you can do it. It gives you an extra layer. And on the off chance that when you do this, a lava monkey mimics you, does the same thing, expecting you to jump this way. Some people, yeah, probably expect you to like, do this, beat them at their own game. So they're probably going to like, oh, he's going to do it, yeah, and then jump back. And then all of a sudden you're over there. It gives you the time, it gives you the extra time from when they get there to here to prepare, to get away, do whatever, and you don't even have to stay here. If there's a lava monkey, you know they hit back or they're a little behind you and they can't see you, you can just run. What I love about this tree are these hills right here. If you get behind... A couple of them. Now, if you're at light post, you can't see me. I'd have to jump, or you'd have to jump to see me. So then from here, I can go scale. I can go run that way. I can scale big tree. I can run over here. Anything. It's great. Keeping something in between you and the lava monkey. Works here on that light post. Works there. Works on mini tree. Works on that tree. Works on super, super thick tree. Even works here. My ground video, I cover it. I have lava monkeys running at me this way. Oh, well, no. why not just go up? Oh, they see that, that's why. So let's shimmy around, and then I'll go up. Because they're always going to expect you to be in the last place they saw you. So if I'm running at a lava monkey here, and I'm not thinking about it too much, and I see them turn away this way, I'm either going to keep following them and expect them to be going this direction, or I'm going to be, you know what, I'm going to be smart, and I'm going to go this way. And then they're up there. They're going to expect you to continue in the direction they last saw you go. So if you, instead of immediately scaling and then being able to see, oh, he's scaling, I better scale with him. You dart around the tree, they can't see you, and then you start scaling. By the time you make it up here, they're going to have absolutely no idea where you went. went. It doesn't sound like it's a juke, but by kind of definition, it's anything that loses your chaser. So even something as simple as this counts. I do that more times than I could count in every single lobby I've ever been in. It works like a charm. Lava monkeys coming this way. I scoot behind so they can't see me. I jump up here, here. All of a sudden, I'm over here. If they went around here, they have no idea where I am. And if they do, they see me over on roof. That's another second I get. And then I can go to the other side of roof or over there or whatever. And if I do this, and let's say they're right here and they see the corner of me jump up here they're gonna think ah oh, he's jumped to the slide oh wait he's there, there, there. it's too late or they may think oh he jumped he's gonna he's gonna scale wait where'd he go anything like that over here at these things it even works here not as well admittedly because people really just like hit through them but it does work so i'm here i'm running around it there's a lava monkey over there i see them i see him dart through the middle boom he messed up i'm gone 
that's uh that's kind of it there are things that i just did here like slide juke that's not much of a juke that's more of a skill and then like this here that's that's technically a juke you know what let's cover the mini ones so this is i guess a part three like the little 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 ones that always work so starting off got chalkboard simple easy and you have two choices when doing it you can do that or you can hit over to slide and from here i like to do wah, i like to do this gets gets people away from me pretty quickly it's pretty easy jump hit here get off this at an angle so that your head comes close to the sides right there see i went really close to the side there that's it that's the motion and from there you can either swing your arm by swing i mean literally swing your arm to catch it and throw yourself over or you can do the same thing but move out a little bit more to make it a little easier for yourself and head off the side that's it works like a charm practice it second slide there's a lot of things you can do and that's decently hard to get started but easiest way to get started throw yourself onto here so let's pretend i'm hanging under there this is what my handle look like so it's coming on and i want it to catch right here or here really anywhere that's in like the second half or last quarter i want to catch and then i want to throw myself so I'm going to jump catch i'm not like reaching down and catching i'm just aiming my jump so that my hand hits at the perfect time and again swing your arm and throw don't expect to get up here every time a lot of people just do it like that or even do just to the front like that so the way you can change the distance is by the swing of your arm and turn of your body so if you want to go all the way behind you do a 180 in real life and throw your arm the same way you did up there if you want to go over there turn your body to face that direction and push away works if you want to go straight just jump Hit the trample or hit the trampoline, the slide at an angle, so you keep pushing forward. That's it. You want to do it with your other hand? The same thing. You want to go up to the top? It takes some finesse, but same thing. You just hit at the right direction. All right. I cover the rest in my ground video. Hospital flips. This is the last little bit. Jump. Catch your arm. Swing under. That's it. Looks kind of easy. It takes a while to get used to, but once you do it once, you can do it a million times. So the motion is throwing up. Not throwing up, like throwing up your hand, catching it here, and then moving your head out of the way and throwing yourself. So really fast, the motion is up, catch. You're moving yourself out of the way and throw. Catch, move your body out of the way, throw. And when you do it, if you want to go full 180 degrees, you're turning your body a full 180 degrees. I like to already have myself in a 90 degree angle when I first come into this. But you can find your happy medium. And if you wanted to do, this is one of my favorite things to do. Not necessarily here, but kind of faking a hospital flip. And going onto the branch, same principles that you're here. You just hit off. Whoa. It takes a bit more finesse because you need your hand to land like right there. Just hit off. That's it. Those are things you can just practice. Or maybe I'll make another video about it. I have a lot of ideas. I just hate editing. Um, yeah, I think that about covers it. Yeah. Um, yeah, let me know if I missed anything in the comments or what I can do to improve the next one, or if there should be a part two, or if I missed anything major, because I am a little <laughs> scatterbrained, I, I miss things, and I'm not perfect. So let me know what I can do to make it more perfecter, more perfectist, more of the perfect, more perfect. Let's just go with that. So let me know what I can do to make it better, um, better experience, teaching, uh, anything, any feedback. Um, yeah, that's it. Bye.